Greetings everyone, and Great here for another HBAR's 4 replay. So on top or bottom left side as a green Delhi Sultanate, we have 3D Bree D. Spawn on top right side as the orange English, we have Caramel 237. Let's see now. Delhi Sultan versus English. Delhi Sultan scores have access to a lot of free tech or well, every technology is free, barring the Outpost upgrades and other weapon upgrades. There versus the uh, English, which does have some powerful farm benefits. He's going to go for immediate mill and farm. This will provide him a very good amount of food that's greater than collecting sheep, as well as prolong the his other current sheep carcasses. Additionally, the English uh, farms are significantly cheaper, so it's pretty easy to uh, spam out farms, as well as the Relatively cheap mill to go along with it. Let's get some good wood collection as well. Huh. This is actually quite a bit of wood collection right now, isn't it? It's one right now just getting gold and berries. Got good number of sheep here all lined up, ready to for glory, right? This farm is in radius of the mill. This is a weird pattern for the farm or for the mill, but it works, it works. And it's going to bring back a massive wave of sheep as well. This is probably too many farms of this age, isn't it? Got Dome of the Faith being put on a field, which will allow him to pull out some additional scholars for cheaper. But this is maybe just too many farms. He has a nine... No, seven farms here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six farms, which will provide him a great amount of food, that's for sure. Do now the council all going on up. We do see some guys' raiders now being deployed on the field. Guys' raiders making his advance. He does have a barracks on the field. When you see the guys' raiders, definitely going to get some spearmen. He does go for a man at arms because you can't get spearmen as English in Dark Age, only man at arms. They're quirky like that. Don't. Guys, ready? We're going to get some hits there onto these villagers. Yeah. Let's get some defensive yeah. arrow fire onto the Ghazi Raider as well. Let's get out some spearmen now. The man arms has been completed. The Ghazi Raiders will hit hard against the man arms. They do get additional 2 damage versus heavy. At this point in time, they will do 12 damage per hit against the man arms. He does get some good defensive town center arrow fire there. More spearmen will probably be in order to deal with these Ghazi Raiders. Longbone can hit them, but of course they get countered by them as well. Going for an early blacksmith where as Deli Solomon probably wouldn't be a half idea, bad idea to start getting the blacksmith free switch going, especially with the Pierce Armor. And he's going to bring home another shipment of sheep. So he's been drinking, he has brought home a large number of sheep. We've got some more spearmen, more along bowmen. Nice little mix force. We do have 14 military units versus just 8, but that does include 6 of the scholars, so it's 8 versus 8. And include both sides uh, scout as well. Zog Doggo will get whacked by some maces. Guys are just pushing forward. These villagers are still very exposed. Does manage to fall back. Should be able to get in there. Extra arrows will come forward to get some good damage there. I am for the counter attack. Try and stop the 6 that being captured. 6 that has been captured. To keep the scout here to be captured uh, or the, maybe the man at arms is probably the least useful thing in this composition against Gazi Raiders. The scout is still needed to provide some spotting for the longbowmen. Each brew that. Gazi Raiders will find a single spearman here. These villagers may want to back off now. These Gazi Raiders 
an easy collapse on, on top of them pretty easily. Spearman getting some hits there. Captain Spearman is very good. Both those units go down simultaneously. Scout push forward. Scout will go... Will go down. Another house and the milk going on up. Spearman here could try to get some stabs onto those Gazi Raiders, but he's just trying to stop the sacred sites from being captured. He's actually trying to stop the sacred sites from being captured on up. Does this provide some good uh, gold income? Each one provides 125 gold per minute. Second sight not being decaptured, the second sight being captured has been captured. The spearman will quickly go down. Also, they're just moving past each other. The gauziers will find a free hit. And do get them stuck right there. That's stop this point from being captured on up. There's a good number of skulls here. We'll provide some good healing. Right now, the English just made one eye for just more spearmen rather than longbows. Now it's starting to pull out some archers as well. The spear and wolf quickly go down. He's throwing away too many spearmen like this. The spearmen now trying to decapture this point. He does have a scout in this area, so they do have some good spotting. I'm your worker. You may want to decide for playing on another barracks to get out some more spear. We do have the blacksmith research going, we're going for pierce armor and melee damage. This will improve the spearman damage from against the Gazi Raiders from uh, 28 to 29. Can't say the math really makes a difference at that point in time. Those numbers are harder for me to compute with in my head. Gazi Raiders will take out the Exotic Doggos. Spearman will go on in. They will get some good damage there on the Gazi Raiders. Exotic Doggo gets some fights as well. Does pull back the wounded Gazi Raiders. They can go ahead and get healed by Scholars. There's this one that's Scholars down there. You can't really be sending these small groups of Spearmen out. They're just getting picked off like this. And his opponent's doing a great job of not taking losses there thanks to these Scholars. Got two deer deposits over here, which he could perhaps claim up. Guys, is now trying to get some hits on these villagers. This villager was not picked off. These ones could be picked off here. Does not have textiles research, so some of these villagers are getting hit. All six sites have been captured up. Doesn't take out these villagers, any of them. One of the Gaziers will go down to the towns of the arrows. Multiple sacred sites have been decaptured. Got a handful of spearmen here, as well as a mana arms. The mana arms. More arrow fire on this God's Raider. Should be able to go down. Does take it out as well. Got a decent amount of longbows here versus 20 archers. So there is a significantly larger army for the Delhi Sultanate. Of course, it is being played by the scholars. But he's been throwing good numbers on the front line as well. Gains some good healing, so. Incorporating the military, counting them as military units is a good idea at this moment in time. Takes out that Gazi Raider, but will lose all these spearmen and the man at arms. This Gazi Raider will be falling back as well. These long bones are falling back at these spearmen. In the region as well, the Gosriders could collapse on in on the long bows as we've got the archers to try and engage the spearmen. Long bows do get a good volley there. They do have the plus one damage over here. We do have the plus one pierce armor. 
Now you've got the early mana arms upgrade for the mana arms, but that was like get cancelled and spawned for textiles as well. Let's go. We now got Siege Engineers in build 2. We'll take about a significant amount of time for that to actually be completed. They'll just get hit once again. Take a sight now. You may hear my drink open up. My apologies. All sick sites have been captured for free once again, so giving some good gold generation. Now do you have siege engineers to pull on the field, which will allow him to pull up the battery amps out on the field. Right now he doesn't have a whole lot of wood stored up for that, however. Oops. We got a force of even some men arms here, which will be able to draw some archer fire. Arch long bowmen for me will start to gauge those archers there. Let's get a couple good follies there. The scholars can feel them. Killed up those guys quickly enough. One one archers to go down. Got a lot of research for the uh, Delhi Sultanate. Had some good research for the English as well. Kaiser Raiders, some of them do go down there. Some scholars getting picked off as well. The spear needs to be refocused on these guys here, Raiders. Long one receiving some hits there. Long one being micro back. Pass the gear, get the gear, pounce the gear, something to get some extra arrows there. More man arms pushing forward. He's starting to transition to man arms as the archers are going to pose too big of a problem for a spearman. And now the good number of man arms here from overrunning, overrunning these archers. The guys are just can hit the man arms for a reasonable amount. And that's why you should still mix in some spearmen with the man arms to make sure he doesn't just engage them like that but fetal age man arms are some of the hardest things one of the hardest units to deal with in this game the guys just can't hit them but it's not a good counter it's more of a soft counter than a hard counter because right now they do get plus two versus heavy which basically counteracts the now three hack arm or of the early man arms but not entirely And not to mention, in the one-on-one -on -one fight, they probably will trade out pretty evenly. So going for more in arms is pretty good. It does disintegrate the uh, long bowman there. Man arms now hacking part of these archers there. Some scholars now trade for trying to get some healing here. Man arms get some great damage from them. Long bowman being pursued. No spearmen here. Let's have some man arms to hold the line for the long bowman. The man arms are falling back now. Let's say the sides have been decaptured. Doesn't take out this wounded guys right there. Doesn't finish off this other one as well. Let's find this man arms for the street as well. Except that wounded one. The other wounded one does skip on out of there. Right now the English arm is very, very bad and bruised. If you take a look at side by side between Man at Arms and the Gazi Raider, right now the Man at Arms does 11 damage as well has 4 hack armor. The Gazi Raider does have 140 health, does 13 damage. Plus two versus heavy, so 15 damage. Minus, uh, what, four from the hack armor. So these concepts do about 11 damage each, while these man arms will do 10 damage each. Man arms do also have a little less health. So overall, on 1v1, the God's Raiders will win out, but of course, they're a bit more expensive. They're 140 as opposed to man at arms, uh, 120. Additionally, the Horizon Riders can't rely on the archers for fire support against those men at arms, while the longbowmen do hit pretty hard. Much harder, and they have to fight less armor. Got a couple spearmen mixed on in as well, so a good mix of spearmen, men at arms, good. Those just get some arm arrow hits there, so I'm full back. 
You can throw a lot of these units inside the town center to get its arrows firing. Let's take out one of the gods right is there. Counts the arrows firing away. Of course, the network of citadels here giving the 20% attack increase for the English, which is very, very important. Let's focus on the scholars as well. The scholars are expensive, but of course, a little bit cheaper in this current engagement since the thanks to this landmark. Most of the gods riders have gone down. All the gods riders have gone down, so long them are doing quite well, and you got to actually have to age up with English now. Let's see, what did he go for? He actually went for the White Tower, not the uh, Palace of Kings. I thought he was just going to go for the Palace of Kings. So we get the additional villager cube, but he's gone for the White Tower, which is a keep. Let him keep what he has built. He's got a good number of mills on the field as well. English right now has a good amount of food reserve, and now he can go for armor clad, which will really bump armor extra forces with Gazi Riders, which will change the math quite significantly. The veteran Gazi Rider research does give him a plus three versus heavy, but the uh, armor clad will give him plus two plus two armor. Let's get a good spear brace there. House learning going up, which could be very useful. He can counter out the armor clad with his own mana arms, getting plus three damage. Both sides could deploy out some crossbows. Uh, no. And if he goes for mana arms or for lances, the English team can go for crossbows. But right now, Green will need to get out some crossbows to help deal with these mana arms. Right now, he's going for a large number of spearmen. There is a potential timing pack here as well. Remember, at least all of them don't have timing packs. It takes a long time for the research to be completed. Let's find the White Tower now, so it does receive a lot of arrow fire, and White and Keeps do hit hard. So right now, the English does have a, a large timing for a timing pack. Doesn't have a whole lot of gold right now for the timing pack. And he actually deployed out a couple scouts and stealing some of the deer, which his opponent's not currently using. Well, for pure damage, he needs to get the better longbowman research and will greatly improve this longbowman. So it will do 10 damage per arrow. It also may want to the hardened spearman research at this current rate. This one's not deploying out any crossbows, nor any additional Gazi riders, nor lancers, nor men at arms. Got a bit of research for everything. Second side here has been decaptured as well. Got green and iron for a large number of palisade walls, which will allow him to obscure quite a bit of the map of weak walls. Got some relics being claimed by orange, but more so by green. He aged up, had monks or scholars next to four of the relics, and will claim himself four relics. English player needs to start eyeing to secure up some more gold. He has two gold deposits over here, one contestable one over here. But both players may want to start pushing towards the southern gold deposit. There's also a gold deposit here as well, more in Green's territory. A good number of archers for Delhi Sultanate, so the more men arms wouldn't be half bad. Horsemen wouldn't hurt either, as well as some knights. We do have some lancers being pulled up by Delhi Sultanate. We have armor clad as well as the man of arms, man of arms research, upgrading Vanguard man of arms to regular man of arms. Does have the uh, veteran long bowman there, does not have the veteran spearman just yet. Yes, 
He has four mills up and going. Let's take a look at the food income. I do have 71 to 71. Both sides have not deployed on additional town centers, so losing villagers is going to be very, very hurtful. Come on, hold there, Boba. An outpost here, which will fly the network of castles. Green, which will also give them some good gold income. And the English player could have been a bit more aggressive. Now this one's starting to get a lot of technologies going. Right now, the military force of both sides are getting quite large 109 104. Green has a much higher quality. And we do not see the hardened spearman just yet. Or veteran spearman. Veteran spearman is being researched right now. Green's on advance, so there's going to be a bit of a time window for Green to make his way forward. But these uh, spearmen will do some great work versus these knights. If there's a big engagement right now, I think Orange will generally win. He has a good number of man arms here as well. Crossbows find a handful of arrows there. Pyrenees are advancing forward. The Orange Monk will go down, which is probably a good item for Orange to lose. He's trying to stall off the hard and speed research, and he can't wait any longer. Man Arms needs to start hitting the Arch as well. The Arch is now mixed on in. It's going to be a very messy fight. It's going to be hard to micro all those spearmen there. There's the Venom Spearman research now. Green's army is starting to disintegrate quicker. Orange is staying a little bit higher. He does lose a significant amount of his cavalry. Now the long bone are here as well. They do hit 10 damage per arrow. The knights only have 6 armor. Red and Gazi Riders only have 5. The, the long bone at this moment of time just do hit hard. Let's pull off some of the there to save him. So these gold miners. The rest of this force here is just trying to overrun these archers. Armor plant. These men arms have 8 8 armor, which makes it so that these archers who only does 9 damage will only do 1 damage each. Making a good hard counter. Green needs to eye for some crossbows now. That's nice to escape out this wall. He needs to focus on these spearmen first. Longbow is pushing forward, trying to hit some of these other force there. Focusing on this Lancer. Those other network castles here for increased attack speed. More man arms been pulled on the field. Orange has broke through here as well. Maybe good idea to send over Solid Dog and King Spice there. Maybe I'm for to capture that secret site now. And a small force will be intercepted by those Lancers. And the Lancers will be very effective versus these uh, men at arms. Trying to pull out some more walls there. Very nice. Okay, we'll not be able to capture the secret site anytime soon. That's going to get a spear brace there, but he will still get taken out. Orange House is starting to mix in some crossbows as well, which will be very useful for his lancers. Orange House is now trying to eye for southern sick site. This Alcade gate is going to go down very quickly. Green Course can flank through this Palisade gate. Got some board mosques here, as well as Siege Workshop. Magnos will be very powerful in this moment. I split off most of this force and going to keep a couple of units there. Green's man arm or orange man arms, which is our engaged green archers. Now just push them right forward. Let's get a good Magnos shot there. Spear brace do come forward. Magnol, push away four, trying to hit these long bowmen. Long bowmen doing a good job of microing back. 
Looks like Orange is going to front line, so it's going to great. Megan will find some good hit there with long bowlings. Clean through a good chunk of health. Now trying to run away from these Lancers, but looks like he will lose his army. Green's ground force is still here. We've got more reinforcements here. When he gets some spring now, the White Tower does access, able to produce everything, so he can get out some spring dogs from it. That looks like a one of Maganellos, didn't he? Nope. So right there, I think, yeah, there was one that went down there. Lance is trying to push away forward, gets hit there on these villagers. Another siege workshop still here. Trying to decapture the sacred site. We'll put a pause on the, um, the countdown timer. Now we've got the Berkshire Castle being pulled out. Right there, defensive position. And a little bit off to the side, honestly. But I think he just wants to get it quickly brought on up. It'll help him secure up this region as well. There. Here's now engaging these archers at close range. A couple men armed crossbows here as well. The Lancers should be able to clean up this force. Hanging off the way forward. We'll start receiving uh, spring, uh, Berkshire and Castle fire. Let's get a decent hit there. Now we've got the High Star Academy, not familiar with that one. Not sure where it's getting deployed at. There it is. That's my Sajra, and does get plus food per technology research. Very nice. This will give him a lot of free food to work with. And he still has all the sacred sites there, so the sacred site victory is still counting down. I just realized as well, I don't have the rumble channel up, so in case I'm in chance, I don't get it. Good spear brace there, we'll be able to pick out these lances pretty easily now. It's... But now I've got more lances pushing on in. A couple of those lances do go down, but the rest of this force will go down in turn. Massive wave of research being pulled on the field. We're now the elite man arms research, as well as more force coming out on the side. And there's still very little, small in army size, going for a large number of man arms. Right now, the English is very low in wood and food. We're going to try and play if you get the, to these sacred sites. You may want to go for elite army taxes relatively soon to get these men arms extra additional health. But they still won't do much for these knights or these lancers. They have of course the Keiji damage increase as well. A couple men arms push away forward, we'll be able to take up these archers no problem. And down south, here comes the lancers versus men at arms. Megano finds a hit there onto some of those man arms. Right, or sacred sites in the way. Let's get some good hits there. And Orange's army here will get cleaned on up. And he's starting to break through over here. Just going for full mana arms. Mana arms now trying to engage these lancers. Building more lan uh, lancers and crossbows would be a good idea to deal with the mana arms, in my opinion. He has an enclosure's technique and technology, so it does give it an extra gold generation. Taking out a good number of those lancers. There are elite lancers right now. More men are just being streamed in over here. They're just being blood off. More torches being thrown onto this, onto this palisade wall. 
and this is a pretty tight choke point there. Man arms and mine's not going to engage out too well. Let's go ahead and start the deep capture process. We'll put a pause and sacred side to victory. It's good kills over here. Over here, we do have more man arms engaging, and we'll be playing ring around the rosy. Right now, at least one player is getting good resource uh, in thumb, as well even has a good amount of stone reserve. They could put a, put a keep next to every single secret side to keep them secured. The man in arms should lose out this fight, but Lancers are getting slowly whittled down. Yep, it looks like the man in arms may actually win this fight. You got men arms spam for the English. You got a line of stone walls being put up by Green now. This will help him lock down the southern map. This second site will potentially be decaptured. He needs to get some of these units back on the second site. Yeah, he does keep one there. Good. The second site's being decaptured as well. Lights just being streamed on in one at a time. Men arms do cost half the cost of the elite lights of a Lancer. Lancer's supposed to have much better population efficiency. And what Orange can do here now is get a siege tower, place longbow up here, hell, crossbow and hand cannoneers, and they'll get a plus two uh, range to help him uh, provide some bombardment to the sick site, which has been decaptured now. Can decapture this sacred site now? Magnol, this fine. Green Magnol is here. This will provide some good fire support. You now have the elite army tactics now being army tactics being researched. More of these Gazi Raiders pushing forward. Gazi Riders, Raiders. They have plus four is heavy, which is still not great. That's now perfect power elephants. They have crossbows to do the bonus damage, which is heavy. These men arms are overrunning these uh, Maganels. This six side has been decaptured, so perhaps cool off this region. This six side's being recaptured up. Got a gate over here as well. These hollow elephants are ranged, so they will see bonus damage from the horsemen. More main arms are streaming around. He's getting S1 and Q on up. More stone walls going up. Got a big stone wall project. And this one, a few times, I think a siege tower would be good, very useful. The plus two range from his opponent's walls could provide him good fire support. And if he would have gone for the Vineguard Palace rather than the uh, Berkshire Palace. He could get the Vanguard Rangers, which do have 9 range as opposed to Long Globe and 7 range. So, on top of walls, they could have 11 range. Green's starting to replace that policy gate now. Orange Man Arms are pushing way forward. Maganos find a pretty good hit there. Trying to go for keep here as well. These Magnals will get overran. They'll get overran. Oh, we got defensive keep going up to protect this sacred site. Trying to go for keep over here as well. We also have some hand cannons pulled by Green. With the stone walls going up, you can place them on top of the walls to give them a good fighting firing position. Raise the catch of all sickness right there. More main arms push right forward. Guys are really starting to engage. They're right now doing 25 damage per hit. The extra armor clad will assist quite a bit of damage. But the power elephants with the crossbows will be very useful. These power elephants, they do have a lot of pierce armor. 14 Pierce Armor. Jeez. So best to use Spearmen or Horsemen against them. And I'm trying to decapture the Sacred Sight. This does pause the Sacred Sight capture. And can you doing some 50 damage here? And the stone walls are still being built. Elephants 
opponents may want to keep on moving so they can avoid any additional fire. More hand cannons being thrown on the field. Trying to start torching down this wall now. No keep has been filled in this region. This one was cancelled. Oh, here, looks like he does find these stone walls being built. He will interrupt with a handful of mana arms. The six sites is now being captured, which will pause the six site victory. He's getting some more of the food being resourced now. I assume have max out of food. Could stand and get some more villagers on the skull deposit as well. Right now, the Deadly Soldier player has all the research right now and has a mass reserve of all the resources. The English player has no reserve resources, really. And has just only people on farms. And he's still getting enough gold collection in order to maintain the mana arms production. More man arms portrayed over here. Will go past the stone walls. Or is not for more stone walls over here. He may want to get out siege engineers so we can quickly pull out some battered rams to help him break through these walls. Man arms will turn around and gauge these lancers now. have chemistry activated and always can use force marks to move these hand cannoneers around very quickly and those these main arms are simply not going to do all too much probably a good idea not to build stone wall gate for now and like i said you can get up this is, i like i keep on saying siege uh siege tower could actually be very useful you can turn his walls against his opponent those tower elephants still because are still a big problem they have really really high pierce armor we have still have to use spearmen or horsemen against them which he does not have any sort of real wood income for that going for the siege works now or some battered rams as well Multiple battery and something poured on the field. Lances will spot this. And arms and Lance now engaging. He's going to try to focus down the battery ramps. He, he kills off the battery ramps, then his walls are safe. And now it's going straight for this battery ram once again. Batting Ram does go down. He does have enough wood for another Batting Ram. We also got some Bombard emplacements here as well. He does also have, uh, they're also fortified. They have the Court Architect. And Canyers can go on top of wall segments. Potentially, uh, paying the location. And go ahead and start getting some extra range. These elephants are trying to run away. One does both of them do manage to go down in time. And on the mana arms are hacking apart these lancers. More mana arms pushing up here. A lancer just hitting too hard, they're doing 35. The elite mana arms are doing 20 each. So in theory, cost effectively, they are doing better than elite lancers, but simply just don't have enough population space. He does have less villagers as an opponent, that's for sure. More battery rounds being pulled out over here, very nice. And the late weak beams will be very helpful. Bombard now trying to shoot the battery ram. I suppose that's one way to stop the battery rams from pushing forward. The 
Dragon Song have hit the, wall, the gatehouse, they they'd probably, probably be best if they hit a blank wall segment so that this one can't push them forward. And now I've got some hand canyons up here, very nice. Their benefits is plus two power range and take 66% less range damage. So they open fire away to the heart's content. And with chemistry as well, they get some good damage there. And there goes that wall segment, so some of those hand cannons are a little bit exposed now. So they're going to go on the far side of this gate and they'll be fine. Banners having trouble pushing forward. They're getting stuck on the banner rams. Got a very good number of hand cannons as well. Orange now has to consume his gold reserve. He needs to follow to get some, uh, some of that other gold deposits to claim. Banners push away forward. Battery Rams could kill on top of the second side cell. Go straight for there. Orange ground arms is being ripped apart. It does have 32 remaining. It has 80 of them queued up. This is what happens when you fly out one unit. If that one unit's not cutting it, you have to not have a good time. He does have a council hall, so he can fly out some crossbows to help hit these lancers. Hell, his own hand can use wouldn't be half bad. To help him hit the tower elephants a little bit harder as well. And now it's going for some more sub walls. This battery ram will push his way forward. Take a side victory will win in three minutes. And I think the other Sultan has a game in the bag. He has 20,000 resources stored up. His opponent only has 1,500. Hopefully, oh, that's a good, good number of uh, outposts here to be upgraded. Hopefully, Delhi Sultan's uh, mass product produced a lot of Garrus, uh production buildings. Yes, he does. He does also have a bunch of stuff queued up Lancers and Hand Cannoneers. He's gotten more than Hand Cannoneers now. Lancers could just start going to hold the line there. Just throw some shots over here. And he tried to go back to this breach, but it's already been closed up, so these battery rams are going to be picked off by these lancers. <laughs> Trying to go for some more battery rams now, that's not going to be very useful. Take a side victory, two minutes. We've got a big wave of fortified outposts going on up. Part of a stone investment, that's for sure. I think he bought a lot of stone for that. I just see a thousand stone. I think he just bought a thousand stone right there. Let's go for another keep. So really help him lock down this region. This one is really focused in this region. Might as well lock it down. It does have boiling oil. It doesn't have spring gold nor cannon placement though. And Cannoneers get on the walls. They'll get some great fire support now. And it's also taking time to repair up the Palisade Gate, the Zone Wall Gate. No stone on stone, however. We'll take maybe a time to start booting up this keep. But it looks like all the mana arms are getting gunned down right here. I was going to buy some more stone, trying to repair up the stone gate. There goes that stone gate now, but the hand cannoneers are still pretty healthy. Only a couple of them are going down with the hand mana arms being annihilated. Got also a second line of stone uh, policy walls here. Some of these villagers may just pass on this keep. Not a whole lot of villagers building that keep at the moment. The keep arrows do. 50 damage per arrow, so they do decently well with some main arms, which have 10 pierce armor, so they do 5 damage each, which is actually not that great. And gets annihilated. Does have another 190 more queued up. 
Let's get some crossbows out, finally. At this point in time, he needs some longbows. I go some keep for some odd reason. There's a... And that's game. And that is the end of the replay. This is Anne Great saying, thank you for watching, and on to the next replay.